Hello and welcome to AutoInform, Frank's Toolbox. This particular feature, we're going to take a look at something that's often greatly misunderstood and perhaps the importance of this subject, wiring and connectivity. Increasingly, a lot of the repairs we carry out involve the repair to wiring looms, maybe splicing looms, uh, maybe modifying components, fitting new sockets, for any number of reasons, we end up doing a number of repairs which save a great deal of time and money without which, of course, a new wiring loom would be needed. So what I'd like to do is take a look at some of the tools, albeit very simple, very basic tools, but what's able to be purchased and, and what technique is involved in actually correct repair technique with vehicle wiring. First of all, the tools. Tools such as these allow and enable manufacturer sockets, they come in all various sizes and types and variants with some very very discreet fittings in other words now the size of terminations is such that the correct tools are absolutely vital A, if you're going to remove the pin from the socket and more importantly if you're going to put the pin back in the socket without damage to the new pin so it's absolutely vital that the correct extraction tools are used. The particular tool I'm going to use in this exercise is that particular tool and you can see that the various jaws on these tools are precisely manufactured to allow correct insulation and removal. That's the first important part of this presentation. And a very obvious second and very important part of the presentation is the ability to actually obtain the sockets. I have to say they're not all available. There are certain sockets which we have not been able to obtain. But this particular kit was purchased for diesel repair. And in this kit, there's a whole range of sockets. Delphi injector sockets, repair kits. And Mercedes common rail injector socket repair kits going all the way through to air mass meter repair sockets, 2 pin, 3 pin, 4 pin, 5 pin, 6 pin and I believe 7 pin. They're all available, all with the correct terminations and the all important weather boot to prevent water ingress and therefore corrosion once the repair has been effected. So they're all available. Uh, replacement parts are also available to top up the kit as the individual items are used. So that is an absolute must. That particular kit, as I say, was focused on diesel repair. We have other kits which focus on particular manufacturers, Renault, VW, etc., Ford. So all of that is available. On to the actual wiring repair itself. So let's take a pretty standard section sensor type of cable. There's a number of devices you can use for stripping back cable. This happens to be a pretty um, accurate pair of um, crimping pliers which allows removal of the insulator without actually damaging the circuit. So simply select the correct size, pull back the insulation. Now of course you can determine how much of that insulation is required and it'd be difficult to see on camera but that has absolutely zero damage to any of the strands in the cable that's one of the most important considerations so with the correct crimping pliers I, I do I, I do suggest these type of pliers be avoided where possible and use that type of uh, strippers because it allows a much more accurate removal of the insulator prior to crimping. Next, of course, we need the correct terminal. So I've just chosen a standard Bosch type terminal. And once again, we can insert the cable. And once again, we need the correct. Now these are the correct ampiversal. This is an ampiversal type of socket attachment. We can now use the correct crimp 
So by very carefully adjusting the cable so that the, the actual wire cable is in the jaws, bringing the, the jaws together firmly and the final crimp is on that section. I'm just going to let you have a look at this in a moment. So I'm just going to finish the crimp off. Now you'll notice that the cable in effect has been crimped like so. So it's a solderless crimp. We have not yet crimped the strain relief part of the socket. That's the next process. And you can see from that extremely durable, strong connection. We now need to crimp the strain relief part of the terminal. And for that, once again, correct selection of the jaws. And this is where you don't need to be overzealous because you're crimping into the insulation. And you can see from that process a very, very neat termination has been achieved. No need for any soldering. In fact, a lot of these connectors will not allow for any solder whatsoever, otherwise you will not get them in the socket. So once that's been achieved, we can now fit the terminal securely. And that now is attached. Now, of course, there will be two terminals in the case of a two-pin socket. And of course, we would want to insulate this from the weather. So once again, we would pass the cable through the rubber boot. And once again, once that termination has been made and the rubber boot goes into the aperture, we can then close the gate, it's like a little mechanical gate. And there we have one professionally repaired two pin Bosch style socket. And that, of course, would entirely match the original build quality. All right, extraction. So we've terminated it. Let's extract the pin. So in the case, I've already chosen the correct pliers. And I want to go either side of the jaws. And they can see the extraction intact of that connector. And if I wished to reinsert that connector, all I have to do is make sure that the security tang, which is a little spring clip, which attaches inside the socket, is actually proud, and it is. So in actual fact, I can reinsert that quite successfully in the location. And once again, you can see it's reattached completely without any damage. Very important issue because we're actually finding now a lot of wiring problems are problems with what we call sensor plausibility, where quite often when you actually make a measurement, an ohmic measurement with a multimeter, you often find that actually the resistance through the cabling is often quite good. But nonetheless, you still get a problem with the actual quality and the integrity of the signal leading to, to many problems. Um, so correct cable connectivity is a real issue, particularly with CAN networks, particularly with sensor circuits. Many manufacturers now are producing repair kits for terminating new sockets and new components. And it's important that the termination quality be carried through right the way through the loom, um, necessitating the, the use of this type of, of connectivity. Now, of course, when we come to then connect this cable, to the rest of the loom, it may be necessary to use a slightly different type of connector. So once again, zero damage to the actual cable. We're going to use a pretty standard automotive inline connector. And we're going to crimp the cable nice and securely. Yep. So we now have one side of the cable crimped. And of course, if we were connecting this completely, and why not, let's, let's do both ends of this cable. So it was a, a natural repair. I'm gonna resist using the other strippers. 
and we now need to insert that cable and I'm being particularly careful not to splay any of those strands it's quite important that all of the strands of the cable remain intact and I'm just positioning the insulation carefully before I crimp make sure the crimp is in exactly the right position so we now have a secure connection these particular terminations have a sealing compound built in them and require heat to finish the process off so carefully apply the heat and you can see the connector shrinking around the insulation and making sure not to apply too much heat, just enough heat just enough heat so that it takes a perfect seal you can see some of the bonding sealing agent just coming out of the end that's still warm when it sets that will be a perfect watertight seal and of course on the other end is the manufacturer's specification connectivity so really important issue um, we've had a lot of problems one recent problem was with a discovery in fact we're also with a freelander where the plausibility from the rail pressure sensor was affecting the fueling of the vehicle quite severely and they produce a simple uh, wiring modification which involves um, re-terminating um, part of the loom back to the ECU and once you've done that to this standard you'll then have the correct integrity from that sensor and indeed then it fixes the problem so it's a very important issue so thank you once again for joining me <laughs>